All right, today I have the fun job of replacing the upper and lower ball joints on this 2006 uh, Silverado 1500. Uh, it has a uh, 4.8, it has the 4.8 motor, not the 5.3, but it doesn't matter, all this stuff, all the parts kind of cross-reference with the 5.3, so. Um, the ball joints on the right side were really bad. These ones obviously aren't very good either, but um, the right side were, were totally shot. So <clears throat> if you're gonna do one side, you should probably do both, uh, just like these shocks that I just replaced. Um, so it's all gonna start, I mean, it, first off, I mean, this is a kind of a, a bigger job, I guess. Um, the first time I did ball joints, it probably took, oh, I don't know, probably three quarters of the day. Um, now that I've done them a few times on, on different trucks and stuff, it doesn't take as long, but just be prepared to put a, you know, put a, a Saturday aside or, uh, you know, d definitely a, a decent part of your day. So, um, it's all going to start, like I said, you take off the wheel <clears throat> and then you want to take apart the brake assembly. Uh, you'll take apart the caliper first, make sure you put it up somewhere where it's not gonna, you know, you don't want to put any stress on the, on the brake hose there. Um, but you'll take the, the brake caliper off, which are these two bolts right here. There's one, there's one here at the top and one at the bottom. Um, then that'll slide right off. You'll put it on top and then I'll take the bracket off, the caliper bracket. Um, then once I have that, then uh, I'll come back and it's just repl uh, removing the rotor then and, and taking off some of this other stuff. But, uh, but I'll get to that point and I will be right back. All right, got the bolts off. Uh, just wanted to mention really quick, uh, these are 19 millimeter. Uh, that's what I use, and then you can see there the caliper is just going to slide right on off. Before I take that off, though, I am going to disassemble this little bracket here. And uh, if I can, and I can't get to it yet, but I'm looking for the ABS sensor, which is this wire, and it's behind the rotor, so I can't get that to that until I get this off. But I'm going to take uh, this off because in order to replace the ball joints, you got to replace, uh, or you got to take off this knuckle here. So, um, anyways, going to take off that bracket, do all that. Um, Something common when I work on brakes, uh, people ask me all the time about bleeding the brakes. You should not have to bleed the brakes uh, only because I'm not actually doing anything to get air into the brake uh, system. So um, when you take off a caliper and everything, it's, it's fine to do all this without uh, bleeding the brakes afterwards, uh, unless for some reason, you know, maybe here's your bleeder bolt. Maybe if you crack that or if you open or if you, you know, this is uh, this is uh, for your, for your uh, brake hose here. So um, if you crack this, you'll get some air in there. So just you don't need to touch it though, so don't don't touch that one. Uh, just slide the caliper off <clears throat> and then put it up here somewhere, bungee cord it up somewhere. Uh, just keep it out of the way. Um, you don't want to bleed the brakes or anything. So anyways, just want to say that real quick. Um, I do like to mention what size I'm using of, of what. So this is just a 19, 19 millimeter there. So um, I'll get that off and uh, be back in a second. And this bolt here is a 10 millimeter. Um, so once you get this off here, there we go. Jesus. There we go. Okay. Um, little handy clip guy there. All right, so this will come off um, and we'll be able to pull the caliper off. I don't know, you might have to wedge. We'll see if I don't have to. There we go. And I'm just gonna stick that up there and, and out of the way. Uh, right now I'm kind of being held up by that ABS line, so um, I can just set this up there for now. Don't move. And, uh, I will work on getting this bracket off. You'll have your pads here. I guess we can talk about those. Um, as long as your pads are okay, which these ones are decent, usable still, um, I'm going to set these down to the side here. And then there's two more screws in the very back that hold this bracket on. So here's the bottom one and the top one. You can't really see it, but it's back here. Um, you'll see it when you're looking at it. Uh, or I could just, you know, pull this light over here. Let's see if I can get that. Yep, so right there it is. So there's that one, and there's this one. You take these two off, this whole bracket comes right off, then you just pull the rotor straight off. So um, 
I will do that and be right back. All right, and these bolts, just to update here on the, the socket size. So those bolts for the, the caliper bracket, those are 18 millimeter. So um, I've already cracked them loose, so I'll get those off real quick and be right back. All right, got both of these off here. Um, so you'll see here, here's the top bolt I'm gonna take off here. This will be interesting with one hand because oh, well, it'd also be good if I did it the right direction. Uh, when I take that bottom one off, we'll see if this comes crashing down or if I have enough time to catch it. And I kind of caught it. So there it is. Slid right off. Um, set that off to the side. And then, so here's your rotor. There's nothing holding your rotor on. So that should just slide right on off. And there it goes. Set that off to the side. And then that ABS cable um, that I was telling you about goes right back. I'm gonna move my light, but it's right there. And then there's a little Allen bolt to the left of that sensor. And then you open that up and that'll just slide right on out. So um, I'm gonna find out what Allen that is and pull that on out and be right back. All right, well that sucked. Uh, <clears throat> Whoever worked on this before stripped out this screw here, um, not the threads, but the, uh, the actual part at the very top here. here I'll bring it down. Um, so I'm not sure of the size of this Allen. It seemed like it was like a five. Um, now this one says an H5, but for some reason a five on my other Allen wrench set wouldn't fit in it. So I don't, I don't know what size this is for sure, but. Either way, uh, that top was kind of stripped out. I'm leaving this in there just so when I put it back in, I can just reuse this as is. Um, but anyways, it shouldn't be as difficult for you, but uh, I got that out. And I was just gonna show how easy it is to pull this guy out. I mean, there's nothing else holding this in, so um, just gonna give it a, uh, maybe. There's a lot of crud on this. So we'll see how easy it is to pull out. It should be as easy as just yanking on it, but it, ah, there we go. Just had to wiggle it around some. Well, maybe. Well, I'm gonna get my other hand out, so uh, I'm gonna quit recording, but like I said, it should be as easy as just pulling this thing out and working on it. Um, might have to spray some brake cleaner, which um, I have been doing uh, here in a second when we take the knuckle and everything off. I'm gonna spray all the ball joints with brake cleaner. So you do want some brake cleaner. Uh, it definitely doesn't hurt. So um, anyways, I'll get this out real quick and be right back. All right, yeah, there's some, quite a bit of gunk uh, built up on that thing. So I was able to just kind of use some force and pull it on out when I had both hands. Uh, this is in there. Uh, the bigger hole goes around the actual sensor here and it sits in like this. Um, I'm gonna set that off to the side, but you don't wanna lose that. Uh, the next step after this, seeing it now, since we have that out, we can pull all this off to the side and get it out of the way there. Um, the next step would be to pull off your entire tire wheel bearing. Uh, what I'm going to start with is this one has this little cap on here. Uh, this is just a cap. You should be able to get a screwdriver down here in this groove and pop this cap off, and then your axle nut will be exposed. So um, I'm going to stick a screwdriver in there, pop this off, and I'll be right back. All right, cap is off. Uh, when you get that cap off, uh, the axle nut will be exposed. On a lot of these, I've seen them to be uh, like the uh, the castle nuts, and then it's got a little cotter pin in there. These ones, at least on both sides, you know, they, well, on the axles themselves, it's not like they got a place for a cotter pin, but um, these do not have that. So all you need is an oh, an impact wrench definitely helps in this case. Otherwise, you got to put the uh, the car like in a gear or something and, and somehow stop that axle from turning because you just don't have the the kind of torque needed with like a standard wrench or something so um, anyways this is a let's see if I can read here 36 millimeter 36 millimeter uh, socket sure that sounds right um, Yep. So, um, should just be able to 
Stick it on there. Just like that. And then you got the axle nut and you got a little washer in here too. Um, I'll dig that off here. Oh, there we go. And I'm gonna set that off to the side and my little tray stay. Um, then the next part is to get the actual hub off. Uh, so there are, and I'll have to check the, uh, well, I don't know, maybe they're not. That one's, let me look. <sighs> nope, they're sockets. Um, there are three of them on this car, or on this truck. Uh, you want to take those off, and then that'll make it. Uh, now, this is probably going to be one of the hardest parts of this, because um, the wheel hub is kind of hard to get off sometimes. you got to kind of beat the crap out of it with... Uh, Hopefully, hopefully you have like a heavy hammer or something. I've got this this mallet here. Um, but you can kind of, uh, once you have those three bolts off, there's one on the, the top here you can see. And then there's one on, well, here's one. And then there's one right on the other side down here. I don't know if I'll be able to see. Oh, yep, right there. So those are the three that you want get, to get off. Once those are off, you can start breaking this apart. And uh, I'll show you that here in a second and this dust shield will come off as well. This dust shield is only wedged in between those two, so um, that's all that's holding on this dust shield as well. So uh, I'll do that real quick and be right back. All right, quick update. Um, I'm still taking these, these bolts off here. This one was a pain to get to because the tie rod was uh, in the way, so I went ahead. Um, <clears throat> all you do, there's an 18 millimeter uh, nut on this end of it, so it usually sits in like this, so it's at the bottom. You take that nut off, and I just pounded the bottom of it with my mallet that I have. And I popped it right off, and I'm just going to get this out of the way so I can continue with the, these bolts here. And these bolts are 15s. Um, there's not enough clearance in here with the axle. Uh, you have to probably use a little wrench. Um, I'm using uh, this guy here. So this is, this is taking a little bit just because I don't have any ratchet wrenches or anything. But uh, I'm going to keep at it, get those off, and be right back. All right, that part's done. I've got all those bolts out. Um, one thing I was kind of thinking about, it's not a bad idea if, uh, you know, these come through and then you can see the threads of them on the other side here. <clears throat> it's not a bad idea to spray that down with some penetrating fluid or something. Um, I didn't this time. It wasn't too bad. Uh, but if it's, you know, if it's bad on your side, it's probably not a bad idea to just throw some in there, let it soak for a second, then start, uh, start pulling them off. Um, so anyways, that's done. I have already hit the wheel hub a couple times and you can already see the gap starting. So if you got like a little pry bar or something, you can, you know, wedge that in there and kind of pry it around. Make sure you just don't do one edge because, or one side of it, because once you start prying at this side, the bottom side is going to start wedging in and it's going to be in there all crooked. So you want to make sure that you wedge it evenly around. That's like, I'm taking this mallet here and I'm going all around the hub here. So, <clears throat> you know, I'm just tapping it a little bit and I'm, I probably won't do. I probably won't do it too hard because I don't want this to. If I hit this, it'll fall off because I got my my one hand with the camera and then my other hand on the mallet. So, but I'm just going around tapping this part of it, going around it, and then eventually it'll start feeling like it's going to come off. And then, um, not a good idea to let it just fall. I mean, if you can catch it, that'd be uh, definitely uh, optimal. So, um, I'm going to get that, get it off, and uh, I'll be right back. All right, that's completed. Um, one thing I forgot to mention though, I did put the tie rod back on because without this on there, this knuckle kind of moves everywhere. And so when you're hitting on that that uh, that uh, um, wheel bearing, it, it, the whole thing kind of shakes and it's just not 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 really uh, useful. So um, anyways, I'm gonna take this off real quick, like so, make sure I put my nut back on there so I don't lose it. So now since I've taken that off, you know, this thing just kind of moves around. Um, you also notice that once I take that off, there's nothing really holding the axle. That's all that really held the axle in there. In fact, I have a 2500, um, a 2011 Ram, and <clears throat> once I take the um, wheel hub off, I can pull the whole axle out. Um, there's nothing else holding it in. Now this, this does have um, some bolt holding it in, so I can't do that with this, and it's, it's not a big deal. You don't have to do it. So, um, Anyways, uh, I'll get, well, this is just bolts. Pull that real quick. And uh, the brake shield, that came off. That's sitting over there with the hub. Um, 
the next step, uh, I think we're actually ready for the ball joints. So uh, what I'm going to do first, I'm first going to clean all this area up. Um, I'm going to spray some brake cleaner. I've got a wire brush sitting around here somewhere, all the way over here. Um, spray some brake cleaner, take this wire brush, scrape all around it, make sure it's clean. That way you can kind of see what's going on. And uh, um, I will uh, be right back after I start doing all that. All right, so I've got brake cleaner sitting up here. Um, I haven't scraped at it yet. Uh, this right here is a 3 fourth. Um, I have a wrench for that that I'm gonna start working on. I did put the tie rod back in because again, once I start going after this, um, this whole knuckle will start turning if you don't have that in. So um, the other point is when you start working on these nuts down here, some of them have cotter pins. It doesn't look like the, these ones, which these might be OEM, I don't know. Um, it's got like 150,000 miles on this truck, so I would think that these have probably been replaced, but um, they definitely didn't look different than the ones I have. So um, anyways, uh, you don't want to take the nut all the way off. Make sure you keep it threaded a little bit because once you get them all done and we start pressing uh, the the bearings off, it's gonna um, you know it'll come crashing down on you. So, um, anyways, uh, I'm gonna work on that and bear it back. All right. Um, once you get the bolts off, like I said, you want to leave them on um, at least to the very end, uh, or, or you know just threaded at the very very end. You can see it's hardly threaded in, but it is. Um, what I used. Here's a, a ball joint separator. So all you do is you wedge this in here. I've already done it, obviously. You can see it's separated pretty good from the ball joint. But um, once you get all that done, it's not just going to you know, fall for you. Um, what you want to do is wedge that in there, and then you just keep beating it in, and then eventually it will fall. Now this, this top ball joint, I didn't even have to, to do anything with. Um, actually, when I undid everything, I left for a second, came back, and it was just free. So I was like, all right. So that was off. The bottom one was a pain, though. I uh, got this in there, beat it all the way in. It still wasn't working. So once it was all the way in and had it separated as best I could with, with this tool, I just took that mallet and beat the crap out of the top right here. And then right where that tie rod end goes, I kind of beat it here, and it fell through. So the only thing that's holding it in is this bottom nut now. So I'm going to take this off. And once you do, you'll see it's just, just like that. That's it. And then this, that's your knuckle. So that'll, I'll clean that up a little bit. Um, I'm going to go through here now, clean up around the ball joint area. You can see this bottom one's really nasty. Um, but I'm going to go around there with brake cleaner and that wire brush and clean all around there. So I'll get that and then uh, we'll start uh, pressing them out. All right, already got the top ball joint out. Um, just kind of wanted to show how I how I did that really quick. Um, if you've never used a, a ball joint press, um, you can rent one of these down at pretty much any of your auto parts stores. But it's really just like a like a, a C clamp here and then some fittings. So how the top one fits in here, and you know this is depending on on the vehicle. So I've seen them kind of go both directions. Um, on different vehicles but on this one with my you know experience that I just had you can tell that just by the shape of this ball joint since there's a lip on the top you know it was fed in through the top like this because obviously it's not like it's gonna be fed through the bottom because this top lip here is bigger than the hole so this gets pressed in and then it sits uh, flush with the uh, with the control arm so knowing that I had to create an adapter out of those fittings, which are, you know, these guys here. Um, this is a cap, and then here's the different fittings. So um, this one didn't fit over it, as you can see, it's, it's hitting the ball joint. So this wouldn't work because if you're trying to push, you got to push up. And if this is sitting here, you know, your, your C clamp on here, you're going to be uh, pushing down on the ball joint. So you're really doing nothing. It's just, you know, you're just going to be clamping a C clamp. So what you need, or what I needed, was this bigger guy here, which actually goes over this ball joint. Now, well, the caliper's in the way, but this does go over this ball joint and sits on the A arm or on the on the control arm. So then I was able to push from the bottom, and it goes up into this 
this bottom fitting here. And you gotta make sure there's enough room in there for the fitting, and there is. And it pushed it right up and uh, worked just fine. It wasn't too difficult. So did that. Um, my next step here, once I, once I turn the camera off, I'm gonna clean this area. And then this bottom one just goes, it gets fed down. Um, and I know that because if you look at the ball joint, you can see the lip right here. The big lip is on the bottom. So you know that's gonna be pushed through the top and out through the bottom because this lip's too big. It's gonna hit the control arm here. So um, I'm gonna try taking that uh, the, the little mini sledgehammer I have and hit it just, just the way it sits right now. Um, I've kind of cleaned up the edges as you can, might have been able to tell, but cleaned up a little bit with a wire brush and I'm just gonna hit it a few times really hard to see if I can just push it out. You can use a press but it's actually not too difficult just to punch it out. Uh, my experience on the last one, I did have to heat it up. So if that doesn't work, get yourself a, a torch. You can pick these up for reasonably cheap at pretty much any auto store. Um, but then you can set this um, and just heat up this, this ball joint. Let it sit on there for a few minutes, get nice and warm. The, uh, the rubber is gonna probably melt and uh, start burning, but that's okay because it's you know useless anyway. So I'm gonna uh, get that one out. So um, I will do that, clean stuff up, and be right back. All right, I am all done uh, as far as taking those ball joints out. Um, bottom one's now done. You can still see it. I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but you can still see it smoking a little bit. Uh, I did have to end up using the torch. Uh, I tried for a bit without the torch, but uh, after a good few swings, uh, it wasn't moving. So um, another side note, you do wanna get your ax all the way. You don't want to hit anything. All right, so with the axle out of the way, um, all you gotta do is just hit that uh, hit that ball joint out. So, all done. Um, these are the new ones. Getting ready to put it in. Um, you can see it seats right on in, slides in, and I'll need to use that press to to get it in there. And then the little spot on the top that's for the uh, little grease nipple there. Uh, you do want to have a grease gun because once I get this in there, put the boot and everything on, uh, I will want to grease them. So. Um, that's another thing you'll need, um, which I guess besides your standard mechanics tool set, you know, you'll want a torch and a grease gun, um, you know, some brake cleaner and stuff too to clean up the mess. So, um, so now this is going to have to go in. One side note that I also noticed is that uh, the new ball joints have uh, snap rings. You can kind of see the groove in there, this groove right here. Once it fits in, you put a snap ring on the bottom of it. And um, the ones that I just pulled out, I don't know if they're OEM or aftermarket, but um, they did not have a snap ring on either one. So they were just sitting in there. So uh, this one also, the old ones didn't have a cotter pin, but you can see right there in the threads, if my camera will focus, you can see there's a hole in those threads. So uh, it's got a place for a cotter pin. So we'll get that in. Um, I'm gonna work on pressing those in and I'll get both of those done. And then uh, pretty much downhill from there. That's after that, it's just bolting stuff back together. So uh, we're at the halfway point. So um, I will get those in there. And once I uh, get those together, I will be right back. All right, the upper ball joint is in. Um, one thing while I was putting that in, um, there's two things I wanted to mention. One, I did not say anything about uh, when cleaning out where the ball joint goes. So this inside surface, you wanna make sure not to scratch that or gouge it or anything. So don't use like sandpaper or anything to clean that out. Uh, I just sprayed some engine degreaser on there, let it sit for a second. And I, I just, I sprayed this whole area down here with engine degreaser. Let it sit for a second, just wiped it down. And then uh, I sprayed it down with some brake cleaner after that, just to clean off any residue. So uh, that's all I did to clean this area up. And then uh, second thing was the part number. So the upper ball joint that I just put in, I'm putting in this quick steer brand. Um, again, it was a cheaper, uh, a cheaper ball joint. Um, you can go with like Moog or something, which is more expensive. Um, but again, I read up reviews and kind of looked into these and this isn't really a modified truck or anything. I think maybe the, um, the torsion bars are, are turned up a little bit, but, um, you know, it's got no lift or, or real big tires or anything. So no reason to go with anything crazy. Uh, um, but yeah, this quick steer brand, and then this is the upper. Right there's the part number. And then the lower, which I'm uh, about to put in. 
All right, there's the part number, same brand. Uh, let's see, focus, there we go. K6541, there we go. So I'm getting ready to put that one in as well. And again, um, now it's in the packaging still. But this is one, there's the top of the ball joint. I'm actually gonna have to force it through the bottom. Up. So that won't be too hard, um, but I will start working on that. Then I gotta work on putting the snap rings in, which is a pain in the ass because on the other side, um, I've got a pair of snap ring pliers, but a standard set of snap ring pliers for some reason isn't big enough, at least mine aren't, to open that snap ring all the way to fit around this. So I, I can use it and it gets to right about here and then I gotta use a screwdriver to kind of wedge it in there. It works, just a little bit more of a pain, you know, than, than normal. So anyways, I'll get these done and then uh, next up after that's really uh, starting to boot, uh, um, bolt up the, uh, the knuckle and everything. So we're getting there, um, be right back. All right, ball joints are done. Um, I've got the greasers put in, uh, snap rings are in. This bottom one's gonna be on the top. I don't know if we're gonna be able to see it, maybe. There it is, it'll focus, but my snap ring is on that top one as well. There it goes. Uh, I have tested the greasing as well, so once I put those on, uh, I went ahead and greased a little bit, just made sure some grease was coming out and feeding into the, uh, the ball joint. Everything looks really good. So the next part is gonna be to bolt up that knuckle, this guy here. Put it in there just the way we had it. Um, really, I mean, you got a, a top part, a bottom part, and then you got the, the tie rod in that goes in there. And that will be, uh, that'll be it. You wanna make sure you feed the axle through. Um, that's pretty much it. And now we just gotta bolt everything up. And the worst part's gonna be that hub, I think. Um, just remember, I'll probably get the hub on and then um, continue the video from there. But just remember, if I can find it, which I can't, oh yeah, I can. Just remember that when you bolt everything back together, the brake shield, the shield part is gonna be in the front. So it's gonna be like this, because your caliper and everything's in the back. The only reason I say that is because I bolted it backwards uh, on the last side. So I'm gonna make sure I do it right this time and get this all back together. And um, I should be done here in probably about 15, 20 minutes. And uh, have a pretty much all new front end, which actually I was thinking about that as well. While you have all this off, if this was my personal truck, this is a truck that's gonna go out on the, um, on the dealership lot. And uh, I mean, all this stuff's in, in solid shape. So I mean, it doesn't have to be replaced, but if, if I was to buy a truck, and it had you know 150,000 miles like this one has, and I was down here replacing all the ball joints and everything else. I mean, this is the time to replace this stuff, you know. Um, even though the tie rod end, eh, that that could probably do to be replaced, but I mean, there's no play in the steering. There's a uh, no play in the steering or anything, so we will uh, just keep pushing on with it. If I get it all back together and I find out that it is uh, you know bad and I hear some clunking or anything when I turn. Then I know to replace that, but you know, yeah, everything from like your sway bar linkages um, to your sway bar mounts back here, um, the bushings, um, really anything. So, uh, especially shocks. I mean, heck, those are right there. They're cheap. I mean, why not? So, uh, I mean, heck, you could rebuild your entire front end on this thing for probably less than a couple hundred bucks, I would guess, um, just a, a day of labor. So, um, but everything looks pretty decent. I'll get all that bolted up and be right back. One other thing, uh, while I was sitting here tightening these, uh, these bolts up here to the wheel hub, one thing that I forgot to mention, or should mention anyway, is that what I do is each, for each one of these uh, bolts, I'll tighten it up until it's snug. Um, once it starts getting snug, it means that it's pulling in this wheel hub. So <clears throat> basically, you know, when it's being pulled in by that bolt, it's making it, it's wedging it in there. So you don't want to force it too much because you're just going to wedge it in really bad. So once it starts getting snug, move on to the next bolt and then just keep it kind of flush and just keep working away around until it's all the way tight. And then you want to make sure those bolts are really tight. Um, I'm sure there's torque specs. I probably should look them up, but uh, the way that I usually do it is just snug them up as good as I can by hand. And then since these are not aluminum bolts or anything, I mean, this is all, all cast iron and whatnot. Um, what I do is I then put the wrench on there and uh, smack it with the hammer about a quarter of a turn. Um, just enough to make sure that those aren't gonna come out. So we'll do that. Um, once I finish that up, the next step's gonna be this axle nut, uh, which is actually, while I'm thinking about it, that's another good thing to talk about. When you put this wheel hub back on, make sure you don't force it. Um, 
you know, there's splines in there, which uh, you can kind of see them in there. But there's splines in there, and this wheel hub fits, you know, around those splines. So don't don't try forcing it. I mean, just work it around, and eventually it'll it'll match up. And you just slide it right in. It it's, it slides just like butter once uh, once you have it lined up properly. So, um, but uh, got that on. Uh, See, so yeah, once I do this, oh, the other thing is the wheel hub. You want to make sure that this ABS sensor, that these holes are lined up with this gap because this is where the wire comes through. It comes through the back here and, and plugs in. So um, you want to make sure you have that lined up right because you can put the wheel hub on any direction you want as long as those bolt holes line up. But if your ABS sensor doesn't line up, then your ABS light's going to be on and you won't have ABS. So um, make sure you have that lined up. Uh, other than that, I'm going to get this thing bolted back together. Alright, almost done here. Um, getting the ABS sensor on, I just wanted to mention again. I know I did earlier, but don't forget that little spacer there, that little steel piece or aluminum piece, whatever it is. Um, I'm going to get that on, get the rotor on, get the caliper bracket on, caliper on with you know brakes, the pads, get those back in there, then the caliper. And then get the tire back on. So, I mean, this is pretty much it. I mean, if you're this far, I mean, you're, you know, 10 minutes away from finishing it up. So, um, I'm going to finish this up. If uh, anything else comes up, um, I'll record. But otherwise, uh, this is pretty much the end of the video. So, um, good luck if you're going to take on this project and haven't taken on anything like this before. It is a decent sized project. Um, this is actually day two. Uh, I didn't get it done yesterday. Um, so uh, I came back today and, and finishing this up. So, um, <clears throat> like I said, it does take a decent amount of time. If you haven't done this job before, like I said, set, set aside a Saturday or probably about a full day to uh, get this all done. Um, but uh, definitely doable, and it'll save you uh, quite a bit. I know. I don't know how much a shop would charge for this, but uh, when I did my first ball joint job, it was because I uh, I have a, a Ram 2500 and. Uh, I took it to the shop, it needed ball joints, okay, well how much, and I think they quoted me 1200 bucks, and I looked online, I'm like, well hell, the parts are only, you know, and I, I put Moogs on, and I think even the Moog parts, I think, you know, it's still at like 120 or 130 bucks, I'm like, well hell, I'll set aside a day and do it, so I did, and, and it worked out good, so, um, anyways, good luck, and uh, if you have any questions, throw them down in the comments, I've done quite a few of these before, so um, I should be able to help if you have any questions, and uh, thanks for watching.